Wanting to make this a little bit more positive, right? Um, I, maybe we should like turn our attention to different asset classes, right? Like different, uh, you know, um, like for example, uh, crypto or like digital assets. And, and I think there will be an opportunity for alternative data to emerge there and for it to like not really squeeze out the alpha so much so quickly. But I mean, given the speed at which um, alternative data becomes mainstream, I don't know, like m maybe we have a couple of years to go on that one, right? Yeah. Awesome, um, Nate. So I tipped my tip my hand earlier, um, but I'm going to double down. You know, I see the biggest change uh, in in markets coming from the ability of machines to both generate and understand text uh, at at human levels, uh, having profound impact on the market. You know, from the the generation standpoint, uh, you know, being able to understand. What's what matters? What's real? What might be disinformation uh, is going to be critical. And from the understanding point of view, uh, it creates endless possibilities to capture your ideas, to capture your view of the world, and to transform those into investable strategies. And to do that in a systematic way that includes vast amounts of information that today is ignored and that is coming and it's coming sooner than many might think. So I think, you know, as we talk about, you know, the data sets that are out there, the ability to be able to incorporate these new ways of looking at the world that are specific to, 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 to your investment strategy, you know, capturing again, how you view the world, what drives stock prices uh, is going to have a profound impact on, on markets and, and how we all invest. Yeah, and I mean, I think the beauty here is that this type of framework can, and, and, you know, technology stack can really be applied to any problem, right? It, it's about, like, where, where does an asset manager or, or a hedge fund see the value? Like, what is, what is it that they're looking for in the data? So the, the scalability aspect of it comes into play again. That's right. It's infinitely scalable. So once you get your core infrastructure in place, you really can exploit it in so many different ways. Awesome. Anthony? Yeah, just, I would say, um, you know, just like science or medicine is a process, right? It's, it's ongoing and ever-changing, so is technology, right? So as you change the inputs and the technology is available, the, the output uh, continues to evolve and change. So that's the most exciting thing about being in fintech and innovation, right, is to see the ever-going change. Um, one of the things that's interesting, though, is the convergence that we're seeing going on, taking place from... Uh, emerging brokerages wanting to be banks and neobanks wanting to offer traditional payment services and credit cards. And then you have credit unions that want to do all the above. And then you have crypto wanting to get into traditional equities, right? So the convergence is pretty interesting. And I see, I think the data coming out of that space, it will, you know, demand new data sets and the use cases will demand new data sets. So that's fascinating. I would say, um, you know, coming out of the Bitcoin conference in Miami, that was, uh, Pretty amazing to see the kind of enterprise level uh, of infrastructure that's out there and the integration opportunities amongst these platforms. And you, when you think about the fundamental data sets that are available at the equity level, like why don't those exist at the crypto level? So there's there's a lot of learning to be done across both TradFi and DeFi worlds, and I'm excited to see how it unfolds.